Chinook salmon are a critical member of the Pacific Northwest's ecosystem and they hold a significant role in local culture. They also provide many benefits for other organisms in the environment. Yet, in recent years, the Chinook salmon population has continued to decline, ultimately impacting other important species. To talk about these benefits, we turn to Pepper Hambrick at the Issaquah Hatchery in Washington. Chinook salmon are incredibly important uh, because they are a primary food source for a lot of major predators. Um, there's a lot of very actually recent um, studies that show that they are the preferred food of the uh, orca whales that live in the Puget Sound specifically. So um, if you think about an orca whale and the size that they are and the amount of energy that they expend in order to you know, chase down their prey, you want a large return for that, and Chinook are very large. So um, with the reduced Chinook population that we've been seeing, we are seeing an effect on the orca population. So um, they have an impact on the larger predators and, and a lot of the smaller ones too, because of course, throughout their lifespan, Chinook provide food for all kinds of things in the environment. Nine populations of this iconic species have been listed under the Endangered Species Act. The Chinook salmon is faced with human-induced threats such as overharvest, habitat degradation, resource extraction, and the runoff of heavy metals due to agriculture as well as recreation. Heavy metals such as copper and zinc pose serious risks to the health of Chinook salmon populations and come from a wide range of sources. A main source of copper that actively enters local water systems come from boat hulls and anti-fouling coatings. To discuss the effects of these coatings, we talked with Peter Schrappen, the executive director of the Clean Boating Foundation. Anti-fouling paint is really integral to boating. Uh, the beauty of anti-fouling paint is it kills life on the bottoms of their boats so that boaters can then traverse our waters without a lot of algae and barnacles on the bottom, which allows them to um, save money on fuel and it's more fuel efficient. Um, it reduces the drag. So there's a lot of reasons to have anti-fouling paints. Um, oftentimes though, the paint is so good at killing life that it can kill too much life. In particular on salmon, there is a connection between copper and the smelling senses of juvenile salmon and they can um, really have some inhibiting properties around uh, the fight or flight reflex. So being mindful of that, uh, working with, uh, we were really excited about it, the phase out copper bottom paint. I just wanted to mention that with that current law that passed in 2011, what we found in the last couple of months, last year has been that these alternative chemicals are just as bad, if not worse for the environment than copper which is called regrettable substitution. So we're trying to avoid regrettable substitution um, and uh, we're working really hard with our Department of Ecology and the paint companies to find a product that will keep growth from growing but also not hurt baby salmon. Currently uh, on the books there was a bill that became law in 2011 that phases out copper bottom paint by 2018 for new vessels, new recreational boats up to 65 feet um, so any new boat that comes in our state that has copper bottom paint is quote unquote illegal uh, as of January 1st, 2018. And then for used boats and for quote unquote normal boaters, they are no longer able to buy copper bottom paint on January 1st, 2020. In the meantime, a bill just passed the legislature just last Thursday, uh, House Bill 2634, uh, that actually calls kind of a timeout in this whole legislative process and moves the phase out to 2021 and has the Department of Ecology look at leach rates of copper as the uh, copper is on the bottom of boats and it leaches off and what that percentage is bad and what percentage is good and maybe going that route versus the current law that is in place. So there's a little bit of transition going on right now, pretty exciting around copper in Washington State. Although these issues are threatening to the environment, people can perform easy actions to help. Do uh, little things like replacing their anodes and not going the zinc route, which is another heavy metal. Uh, zinc anodes um, can 
leave some cadmium in the uh, water columns, so that's bad for uh, not just salmon, but for shellfish. So we're really encouraging boaters to choose aluminum anodes, just a small little change, and those work great. They're just as good for the environment, if not better. And um, it's an important part for the boatyards because boatyards get penalized for having too much zinc and copper that comes off of their boatyards. So looking for products that work, that are relatively affordable, uh, and that are good for the environment is kind of that triple bottom line, triple win that we're always looking for. I would say that one of the most important things is to just be aware that the area that you're using is shared, right? So um, the all the water that you use, whether it's uh, fresh water or the ocean, all of that is salmon habitat. So anything you do that impacts that environment impacts the salmon. Uh, so if there's a leak, for instance, somewhere on your you know in your engine or if you dump something overboard, or um, if there is something that you're using uh, in your paint that uh, might have an effect on the salmon. Just be very aware that um, your recreation could impact someone's home. And um, that isn't to say that, that we shouldn't be there, uh, but there are safer ways to um, interact with that environment. With your help, can make an impact on the conservation of Chinook salmon. Stay informed and protect our waters.